Can you tell you about the European arrest warrant arrangements? Ireland has repealed its 1957 domestic legislation underpinning the um, old previous extradition arrangements. In those circumstances, what legal way will you have to extradite people between Belfast and Dublin? Sorry. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure the premise is right. So we don't believe we don't that we don't understand that is the case. Um, Ireland uh, continues to have the necessary legislation in place to operate the 1957 Convention and does so with a number of non-EU countries, including including Norway. So you think that the 1957 uh, legislation will be applicable in uh, Ireland? We believe that Ireland would be, we would be able to operate the 1957 Convention, yes, with Ireland. Okay, so we have it. Uh, it uses, uh, uses a convention with Norway and Switzerland. Yeah. Um, well, we've, we've been given information to, to, the, to the contrary, but um, so it would be very, yeah, be very helpful to have the reassurance. It would also be quite a good to have the reassurance that you know for certain, for you to be able to tell us with confidence rather than just saying you believe. So I can, tell you, I can tell you with confidence, we had experts discussing uh, this, the matter with our Irish counterparts very recently. Fine. Uh, but we, as the minister, we're right. Because we right. it's not the information, obviously, that we also had from the police as well. And in terms of what's your assessment of how long it will take to use the 1957 extradition um, arrangements compared to the current system? In terms of processing, you talk about in terms of processing a, re a request, uh, yeah. Chair. Um, so I think that um, it, it partly depends on the, the specific country that we're cooperating with. I think um, there are uh, there are countries, um, for example, the EEA countries, um, including Norway and um, Switzerland, where we are able to extradite under the Council of Europe Convention within a matter of months rather than years. I think in the past there have been some statistics used which suggest that, that, that proceedings can take a very long time. Um, uh, in our experience, um, things have improved over the years and, um, and, and for proceedings under the 57 Convention to take years rather than months is not uh, the norm. It depends a bit on the volume as well, doesn't it? Yes, the, <coughs> obviously the more cases come through um, the UK system under the 1957 Convention because those take more time in terms of court time. Um, then that would put increased pressure on the systems in the UK. Um, but as you would expect, we uh, work very closely with our colleagues in the Ministry of Justice to ensure we understand the likely volumes and are able to plan for the downstream implications on the criminal justice system. So Chair, what is undeniable, as you've heard from uh, other sources, is you know we're talking about uh, tools that are clunkier yes. than, uh, than the existing tools. That is undeniable. And the, because there are more stages. The police told us that there was only one extradition court. Is there a are there plans to expand that if we have to? Um, so we are working with the Ministry of Justice to ensure that um, we collectively are um, able to assess uh, the the volume of extradition requests that are coming in and what that means and requires in terms of planning for the. For okay, the I, I don't really know what that means other than you're working on it. Given that we've only got five months before this may be the issue that we have to deal with, what, what's the plan? Is one extradition court enough, or do you we, need more? We wouldn't rule out more, but we think, there are, we think there are a range of ways we can handle the impacts without doing that, and we, we want to sweat those through um, before that, so it, it is, uh, it, that's where we're at. <clears throat> Okay, and um, the um, the response of the, the um, uh, Irish extradition arrangements obviously um, does contradict with what I think the Northern Ireland Police have been saying. So, how closely are you working with the police if we've had different information from the police about what extradition arrangements are in place? Um, so, we work very closely with the Northern Ireland Police, and um, they are involved in um, a number of the different uh, coordination groups that we operate. I think, I think for us to write to you confirming what the situation is is the best way forward there. Um, I think there, there may have been some confusion here over um, there used to be some legislation that was specific to the Ireland UK extradition relationship, which was repealed, but that's not the same as the 1957 legislation being repealed. But as the Minister said, I think the best thing for us to do is to, is is to write and put that um, beyond doubt. And how many countries will you not be able to extradite their own nationals? Under the 1957 Convention. Yeah. So I think the number that Richard Martin gave you um, was 18 or 19. Yeah. We expect that would be the right sort of 
ballpark. Um, however, um, the operation of a restriction on own nationals, firstly, um, is something that operates under the 1957 Convention and is available to, mem to, to members of the Council of Europe to say that they wish to use it. However, firstly, there are a number of areas where um, we have, um, including recently with Albania, reached an agreement to disapply that restriction. Um, so that is also an, an option open um, to us. Um, and are those discussions taking place so far with those individual member states where this is an issue, the 19 or 20 member states? Um, so there are discussions um, taking place with all member states around contingency planning. Um, generally, um, I hope you understand why I'm not able to go into the specific details about about the status or terms of those discussions with an individual, with an individual country, um, but at operational and other levels there are discussions taking place particularly with, with a focus on extradition amongst other things. So specifically about extradition, so if you think about the, the, the main countries obviously that we currently extradite from, um, Spain we extradited I think 320 people back from Spain over the last eight years, Ireland 240 people, the Netherlands 177 people, uh, Poland 98, France 95, Germany 64. For those top few countries, how many of them will we not be able to extradite their own citizens back? Um, I think at this point I would not, would not be in a position to confirm the specifics for an individual country. Those are discussions that are ongoing. I would also but in, 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 in the absence of any additional measures being put in place, which of those countries can we not extradite people from? I mean, for example, on, on Ireland, if you're uh, more confident about Ireland, yeah, yeah. will we be able to extradite Irish citizens back? So um, I'm not in a position to go into the specifics for an individual, for any individual member um, state. What, what I would say, though, is that the, um, the own nationals bar does not operate to create impunity. Um, most of the countries that use it uh, operate it because they will take over the prosecution and prosecute in their own country because they have general extraterritorial jurisdiction over their own nationals. And there are a number of cases where a country has refused to extradite to the UK on the basis of an own nationals bar, but the prosecution, the proceedings have been successfully transferred to that country and the prosecution has proceeded successfully. So our police would have to pass over all of the information and the case? So, um, and would that mean that the victims would also have to, and the witnesses would also have to travel to those other countries and sit through a foreign court system in order to be able to get justice? That would depend entirely on the case and the circumstances of the case concerned, um, and what the what the right uh, what the right and sensible way forward would be, and the decisions would be made on a case by case basis. But given that obviously a lot of these cases we're talking about child sex offences cases being one of the most common uh, things that arrest warrants are used from. Uh, some homicide, rape cases, grievous bodily harm cases, and those sorts of cases where the um, uh, country has in place at the moment a constitutional bar on being able to extradite somebody, are we effectively saying the victims and the witnesses in those cases would have to go to Germany or to, I don't know, Poland, I don't know which other countries you think currently have in, in the 19 or 20 and also and to sit through a court case abroad in order to get justice. Well, we want to avoid that, of course. I and understand no, that. No, I no, think we are, but we that is an important agree. point, because we are talking about a scenario that we are, uh, you know, our absolute priority is to avoid all of this. We are, of course. We are, and I we think are we, we should take that as read, that we all want to avoid no deal, and we support the government's yes. attempts to avoid no deal. Yes. What I'm just trying to get clarity over is what actually let's be honest with everybody about what the consequences are of a no deal situation well I, i've been i've been extremely honest today in stating out that we, you know we we will lose information we will lose cooperation we will lose capability and by mean we i mean we and our european partners in the specific case of the european arrest warrant we will be going basically back to 2004 in terms of a baseline but as Rebecca has pointed out, um, you know, there are a range of countries that have constitutional difficulties there, Germany being obviously a clear and explicit outlier. But there's a lot of work to be done in terms of sort of bilateral okay. negotiations but there to try and um, mitigate that risk and avoid that. that I mean, which we all want, just, we all let's want just to take, avoid. Yeah. Let's just take Germany, where we know there's a constitutional bar. 
in the circumstances for Germany, are we effectively saying that either a court case doesn't go through or it has to take place in Germany and the victims and witnesses would have to travel there? My understanding is that they won't extradite their own nationals outside of the EU in any scenario, and okay. therefore the emphasis is um, on, on, on bringing justice to bear domestically. And in terms of, so we've got those 19 to 21 countries, I still, I think, given that we have only got five months left, I still think we need more clarity from you in how many of those countries are you having detailed discussions about having some kind of legislation that overcomes the constitutional bar? I mean, there are a range of discussions. There is a, there is a, there is a fundamental challenge here, which again, in the spirit of candour and honesty, I've alluded to before. At the moment, in terms of all the, and I'll be very frank, in terms of all the, what I might call the diplomatic capital uh, out there at the moment, it is focused on securing deal. And that's not just us, that is our partners, and that is the, the steer from the Commission to Member States. So there are, are the range of conversations we're having with Member States on contingency no deal preparation is patchy uh, because the, 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 the clear priority, political priority, is to secure the deal. As and when there is a clear political signal from us and, frankly, the Commission that the priority is no deal. Uh, contingency planning, then the gears, the gears will shift. But we're in, the, we're in speaking but, very frankly, we're back to the stats, we're stage where then it's so, it's, and it's back if, to we're making more progress in some areas than others. So that's fair to say and that. if we're honest, given that there's only a limited number of you, there's 19 or 20 different countries, and there's going to be a huge number of different priorities <coughs> to deal with transport arrangements, airplanes, whatever else it might be, the chances of you getting in place contingency arrangements with all of those 19 or 20 countries to allow own country extradition by the end of March looks like zero. Fair? No, I wouldn't want to put a number on it because um, uh, underlying this is some complication and, uh, and um, you, know, you know, countries might be prepared to extract the UK face trial. I'm not saying you won't make progress on any of them. I'm saying, yeah. is there any chance that you can get in 19 or 20 countries what potentially involves domestic legislation through all of those 19 or 20 countries alongside everything else that we're going to be asking for in a no-deal preparation? Seriously, do you think there's any chance you're going to get that in place in 19 or 20 countries? No. Not by, not, by, not by March, no. 